The menu settings control group is basically for setting the appearance of this menu bar, which at the moment is gray. We're about to change that. Uh, but first, if you don't want to use a menu for whatever reason, maybe this is a standalone gallery that you don't want to connect to anything else, you can simply disable the menu by turning off that checkbox. But we're going to turn it back on. And the first thing I'm going to do is change the color of that bar so that it matches my page design. So for this, I've got a nice olive green color just drab and earthy. I like that a lot. <clears throat> there are also these borders. You can see the thin black lines. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make those wider just so you can see them easier while I demonstrate this. So to do that, you come down to these sliders and there are, is a separate slider for the top border and for the bottom border so that you can set those individually. Um, and as you can see, they're black right now. I'm going to change them. I'm going to make them blue, or a shade of blue, anyway, by dialing that in from my, uh, my color swatch. So now that you've seen that, I'm going to go ahead and dial those back down, make, make them very thin. I just kind of want them to be a highlight rather than a, a bold page element. So uh, we also have color pickers for the dividers. The dividers are these lines between each menu item, which if you don't want to use a vertical line, you can change. Maybe you want to use a slash or a hyphen. Uh, you do that here using this menu divider input. Uh, you can make that any character you want or a word. I don't know why you would want a word in your menu that isn't a menu item, but you know that's your prerogative. If you want nothing at all there, you simply delete that and leave it blank, and they all go away which suits me just fine for this design. Um, but if you did want to have dividers, you could then go ahead and change the color using this color picker. Menu links, uh, this is going to be the color of the actual words that are here, so I'm going to make my links that uh, same eggshell color that I used up above for the master color, and I'm going to make the hover color black. which I think is pretty nice. Um, once again, we have individual control over the fonts for the menu. Uh, it works exactly the same as the same or as the font picker we already saw above. Um, and then we have various controls for font size, spacing, etc. So the words are a little small. I'm going to crank those up to about 14 which is a little easier to read. I want to space my words out, make them a little wider apart, so I'm going to set that to 20 pixels. Um, and then we have menu padding top and menu padding bottom, which allows us to increase the thickness of uh, the menu bar, both above and below the menu items. Which once that renders, you can, there we go. Um, and this is going to play into uh, some layouts that I will show you coming up. So size that bar the way you like it. Um, menu padding left and right uh, doesn't really do anything when you have everything center aligned. But if we set the menu alignment here to left or right, it becomes a much more valuable tool. And again, this ties into that fixed header width that we had up here. So right now I have it set to 960. If I disable this, everything that's left aligned is going to shift all the way over to the far side of the gallery, which again, on wide displays, depending on your design, can either be really cool or it can look totally weird. Um, I am going to leave it over there for just a moment though so I can show you a few more of these sliders. So menu padding left lets you bring that menu in a bit from the left hand side. Menu padding right does the same thing when you have the menu right aligned on the page. 
And finally, there's this total menu width, which by default is set to 98%, and that's to leave a little bit of space between the first word in your menu and the edge of the page. But if you want that, for whatever reason, to run right up against the edge, you can go ahead and set the total menu width to 100 by dragging that slider. And you can see it shoves it flat up against the edge of that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and re-enable my fixed header width. And as you can see, uh, it's now left aligned here. It's still sticking out past the edge of my uh, grid though, which I don't like. And so I am going to set my menu padding left to about 10, because I think that's what should be there. And that'll cause it to line up nicely with uh, the rest of my grid. So that's how that works. Um, it's not how I'm going to design my gallery though. I'm going to go ahead and set the menu alignment back to center. And I'm going to return several of these to their default values of 98% and 0. You've already seen the menu border top and bottom sliders. So then we get into a few other uh, visual components. We can set underlines on our menu links, or we can have them not underlined, but we can tell it to underline those links when the mouse hovers over them. You can also choose font weight. You cannot have either normal or bold, and you can use text transform so that if you want to have your menu all in uppercase, you can do that without having to retype your menu items. It's just a, a styling choice.